Okay, good afternoon, everybody. As you know, for the last couple of lectures, we've been talking about diagnosing the vertical motion in the atmosphere. And it's important, of course, because it tells us something about where clouds are going to form, where the air is rising, and when we'll have clear skies when the air is sinking. And the tool we've been exploring is known as the quasi-geostrophic omega equation. And we've looked at it from a variety of different perspectives up to this point. And each one of those perspectives has forced us somewhere along the way to make assumptions that actually limit the power of that diagnostic. We've had to cut out some of the forcing to make the mathematical uh, representation of this expression simpler to handle. And I've promised you, and today I deliver on that promise, that we are going to finally find one that describes comprehensively the forcing for this very important relationship. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to derive an expression for the so-called Q-vector form of the quasi-geostrophic omega equation. And along the way, we're going to find out this perspective forces us to confront something that's extremely intriguing and extremely insightful about the nature of the mid-latitude flow on Earth. And that is, we're going to find that the geostrophic wind tends to destroy itself by altering the two terms in the thermal wind balance in opposite directions. And in order to illustrate that, I want to point out this diagram that I've got here on the back, uh, on the blackboard. And I've got really three sets of lines that I'll make sure you understand what they are. And you've seen it before. The red dashed lines are isotherms. The white lines are geopotential height lines. And then for the first time ever, I'm showing you in yellow lines of constant momentum in the y direction, geostrophic momentum. So those are isotacks of the y direction geostrophic wind. And on the right-hand side of the board, a simple expression of the thermal wind balance for this diagram, where the, where the isotherms or the temperature gradient vector is oriented only in the x direction. So we've got a balance between the vertical shear of the geostrophic wind and the x direction gradient of the temperature. Okay? Now, the white arrows on that diagram represent geostrophic winds in the vicinity of that area in a, on a weather map. And let's consider what they're doing. As you look at them, those winds are acting in a confluent flow to push those isotherms, the red lines, closer together. The consequence of that is an increase in the horizontal temperature contrast. So the geostrophic advection of temperature increases the magnitude of the temperature gradient. As a consequence of the thermal wind balance, any time you increase the horizontal temperature gradient, you're going to increase the vertical wind shear at a place like point C or column C that I've identified. At the same time, however, this is what's so intriguing, at the same time, those same geostrophic winds advecting y-direction geostrophic momentum, little vgs, are going to be pushing that y-direction wind towards point C, making the wind speed smaller at point C. And that decreases the vertical shear of the geostrophic wind to the same point. So alarmingly, we find out that the very same geostrophic winds that by virtue of their temperature advection would increase the vertical shear, by virtue of their momentum advection, decrease the vertical shear. So the geostrophic wind is tearing apart the thermal wind balance by taking both pieces astride that equal sign and pushing them in opposite directions. This is phenomenally interesting. And put that in the face of the observation that you all are well aware of, that the mid-latitude winds are almost always in geostrophic balance. They're really close to the geostrophic balance all the time. How can that be in the face of this self-destructive tendency of the, of the geostrophic wind? It can only happen if there's some other, kind, some other kind of piece of the total atmospheric flow that's constantly working to push those back together. So we're going to explore in the next derivation the Q-vector form of the omega equation will expose for us a secondary ageostrophic circulation that does exactly what it needs to do, drags these runaway trains back towards the equal sign. How's it going to do it? The tendency of the geostrophic wind in terms of temperature advection here is to increase the temperature gradient. Somehow, the secondary ageostrophic circulation is going to have to relax the temperature gradient. And this will involve the vertical motions. And simultaneously, the geostrophic advection in this picture is acting to de decrease the vertical shear. Somehow, our secondary ageostrophic circulation is going to have to simultaneously increase the vertical shear. That's the only way to get these things that are being forced apart by the geostrophic wind itself to come back to the equal sign which we observe. So before we launch into the mathematics that explores this, are there any questions about that concept? And are you as excited about that concept as I am? 